Meet and discuss meeting of the Ambridge Area School District is held on Wednesday, March 13, 2019. The meeting is to go over the agenda for the regular monthly board meeting that will be held on Wednesday, March 20th, 2019 at 7 p.m. at the High School Media Center. Please rise for the flag service. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Public videotaping. The purpose of videotaping a meeting is for the public information. The opinions expressed by any member of the public do not necessarily reflect the view or opinion of the Ambridge Area School District Board of School Directors and are solely that of the speaker. The Ambridge Area Dis School District Board of School Directors hereby expressly disclaims any and all responsibility or liability for any false, defamatory, or slanderous statements expressed by the speaker. Any unauthorized rebroadcasting of any video, audio, or still image of the video recording of this meeting is strictly forbidden without the written permission of the Ambridge Area School District Board of School Directors. May I have a roll call, please? Mrs. Fisher. Here. Mrs. Kehoe. Here. Mr. Kowal. Here. Mrs. Locker. Here. Mrs. Milan. Here. Mrs. Pedigo. Here. Mr. Sass. Here. Mr. Weir. Here. Mr. Angus. Here. Eight members present. Thank you. Is there any correspondence this evening? No correspondence. None? All right. Uh, recognition with Dr. Walker? Uh, yes, I would like to first of all recognize Ryan Recipio. He's going to introduce his friends and colleagues who are with him this evening. Uh, this came about because there have, have, was so much talk after this happened, both from administrators and teachers, that we really thought that it was worthwhile to bring it to the board's attention. And so Ryan is going to give you this three to five minute presentation. I'd like to thank you for uh, having me tonight. Uh, I'm going to talk about the Westinghouse Science Honors Institute held at Franklin Regional Middle School by Westinghouse Electric Corporation. West, uh, WSHI, or WSHI as they called it, uh, is a 12 series lecture program provided to uh, high school level students, uh, also with two optional trips to Penn State. Unfortunately, we were not able to go to Penn State to see the nuclear reactor up there. Uh, they talk about subjects from nuclear engineering to crime scene investigation and back to design science and ACL reconstruction. Uh, the, the important part I wanted to emphasize is not not so much the the content of these of the uh, presentations, but more of what we were able to do with the thing. So we were able to actually uh, I reached out to an alumni, a Pittsburgh native, and uh, his name is his name is uh, Dr. Leonardo Alberto Conguala. He is the Europa System Mission Clipper Manager at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. Uh, he is alumni of he's an alumni of uh, WSHI, and what we were able to do was have him come to the high school and share his experiences. Although he was not a presenter, we did meet him at our first le at our first lecture. So he came to Ambridge and spoke about his mission, which is the Europa Clipper mission, and more importantly, what he spoke about, uh, which I think was best, is is the impact that we could have at NASA if we were to ever, ever uh, join the uh, association. Uh, things like how we were going to finish the missions that they're starting now, such as such as the Europa Clipper, or or uh, like uh, men jumping from the moon to Mars is something that we would work on and, and our, for our generation. Uh, something else that that we are bringing to this uh, school district is we are having other high level personnel come and present to Amherst students to uh, enrich their interests and education in the fields of science. Something that is in the works right now is. Paige Kasalin, she's an electrical engineer at Covestro. She worked on a solar impulse mission, which is a solar powered plane that flew around the globe without any fuel. So if we are in the works of bringing her to Ambridge, she will hopefully come and speak uh, at the high school to uh, interested students by the end of AP testing this year. Uh, so pretty much what we did with WSHI is, to, to recap, is just, we were able to use WSHI as a resource to bring uh, our experiences that we were to the students who were unfortunately not able to attend the lectures. I thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. With me is my sister Haley Recipio and Mr. Xander Dowling, other students who attended the lectures. There were five of them. It was me, myself, Haley, Xander, Jacob Bodeway, and Mason Osborne. Thank you. Very thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> sure. Second of all, this is the Westinghouse 
same sort of since so you drive up to it, it used to be in Murraysville. Yeah, it's right? a freaking it's a freaking regional yeah. move. Right. right. Sometimes they're really, really interesting. Oh, very interesting. Sometimes they're not interesting at all. How can you say that? Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So but you took the initiative to bring other people in to the school okay, kind of go. outside of it using that you study thing as an that. excuse to get the people that you really wanted to be involved with in the school district, right? That's the real that's the real key thing here. You guys came out of the box and did what you wanted. I've been to that Westinghouse thing. I, I could shoot some of those people. <laughs> Never let it be said that engineers have a really good, good personality. They have a really good personality. Right? Right? Now, am I saying anything that's out of school? Did you guys go to all of them? How many did you go to? I went to seven. How many did you go to? I went to 10. And I went to 11. Oh, okay. punishing. <laughs> <laughs> How many of the 11 that you went to did you really, really like? I would say most of them. I would say seven. Yeah? I feel like it was a solid seven. And how about you? Five. <laughs> Probably seven. seven. Whose idea was it to reach out to JPL? I, I reached out to JPL after approaching Dr. Kungwala at the uh, conclusion of the first lecture. I uh, got his email information from the administrator at WSHI, and from there I contacted him, and he said he was actually more than happy to come back to Anchorage after his experience here. That was wonderful addition. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful yeah. Wonderful yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. You guys did a great job. Thank you. Alright, at this point I'm going to turn the meeting over to Doug. Uh, yeah, I wanted to uh, introduce, you've met Matt before, but Matt Francis from HHSVR Architects. He worked with us in designing the bathroom projects for the middle school, and uh, he's going to talk tonight about the high school entrance, the bridge repairs. Uh, you'll see an item on your agenda tonight that we'll approve next week for authorization to bid this project, but I thought it would be prudent to have Matt come and talk about the scope of the project and what we're Thanks, Doug. Um, good evening, everyone. Again, I'm Matt Franz, HHSDR. Uh, as Doug mentioned, we do work at the middle school. Uh, but tonight is uh, another exciting topic, not as exciting as NASA, but we're talking about the bridge out front <laughs> and repairs that are uh, maybe desperately needed out there. So, um, Just to kick it off, uh, you authorized us to start uh, looking at the, the repairs needed at the bridge um, late last year. Yep. Get one of those kids back. <laughs> there you go. The back one. There you go. Now you got to figure it out. All right. So our. Uh, our design documents for the repairs, um, they're about 95% uh, complete at this point. Um, and they're ready to go out for bids to contractors for them to price and then for you to consider those prices. So I guess what you're uh, being asked uh, tonight or next week at your action meeting is to approve to go out for bids. So uh, we wanted to share the scope of work with you, make sure we're on the same page, and just show you what the conditions are. So. We're going to show you those conditions. I'm going to show you the proposed solutions we have. Uh, we have an estimated costs and a timeline, and we can talk about uh, if you have any questions. So this slide here, uh, just before we get into it, uh, this is just a, a brief history. Going back to 2005, I wanted to just explain how the bridge evolved into uh, its condition that it is in now. Um, these are snapshots from existing drawings from when the building was constructed. And uh, I just wanted to point out a couple key terms here. This one, it's hard to read, but you have your handout too. Uh, this is the, uh, it's a fabricated bridge. Um, and this one below that, bridge by others. Um, what that means is when this was, building was designed, um, the entire building was designed, engineered, structure, mechanical system, what have you, everything uh, from top to bottom. The one thing that was not designed was the bridge. Uh, at the time, the designers intended to bid the bridge as part of the construction package, but they were bidding it to uh, have it engineered by others. So 
they set parameters. Uh, this is the parameters of the bridge that were on the documents. They, they had an image of what it was going to look like. They knew how much concrete they wanted on the deck. Uh, but ultimately, when the contractor submitted his bid, it included a subcontractor designing and building the bridge. And that's what you got out there. There's even a placard out there on your bridge that says who fabricated it. Um, it'd be very similar to a, a pre-engineered steel building that you see go up. Um, when you hire those guys, you know, they come out and they fabricate, they design the building and then they build it and fabricate it. Uh, so this is the image of that ultimate submittal that became the bridge that's out there now. Uh, why this is important is because one of the design intents of the bridge is that it had a five inch concrete topping on the bridge itself. Um, that's all well and good for pedestrian traffic. Um, what we later learned in the life of the bridge up to this point was that there was possibly vehicles that drove on it for deliveries up to the front door. Um, fair, fair statement. Okay. <laughs> um, before Dave's time. Before me. <laughs> The, that's, uh, why that, that's why that steel beam was put in the middle to stop the vehicle to stop from yeah. getting up that far on the bridge because there was a box track on the bridge. Yeah. So the, the bridge was, it's, it's designed to handle vehicle traffic, but only because it's allowed to deflect. Okay, the steel allows it to move and deflect. Uh, well, that deflection causes the concrete to crack. Uh, so it's still structurally safe and sound in its current position, but it's compromised the concrete deck, which was very thin. Uh, if there was a thicker topping of that concrete on that bridge, um, it would have allowed more cover and more flexibility to not let those cracks go. And you'll see some of the staining that you see out there now. That staining that you see is the steel rusting from the underside and from the reinforcing in the, in the concrete coming to the surface. So water's getting through that, and it's obviously getting all the way through the deck, and you'll see that here shortly. So we can go through these slides here. I already talked about the, uh, the next slide here with the top of the surface of the bridge. You can see the staining that I was referencing here and down in the right corner. That's rust stains that are surfacing through the concrete. Uh, when you go out there tonight, uh, you know, there's a multitude of cracks, very hairline cracks throughout the bridge uh, that may have happened as a result of the, uh, you know, the truck being on the bridge. Um, but using salts continue to deteriorate those cracks. Um, the joints in the pore stops of the concrete, water goes down in, um, and then you can see the damage on the underside of the bridge on the next slide there, Dave. So if you haven't taken a walk down there previously, you know, this is the, the concrete forming that was used to hold the concrete when they poured it. And that deck, because of the cracks in the concrete, it's just rusting all the way through. There's portions uh, that are falling up against the back wall. This is pieces just hanging here. Um, fortunately, the steel beams and the purlins that you see, they're all galvanized. They were hot dip galvanized before they were constructed. Uh, they're in good condition. It's the, it's the centering of the form deck uh, that's really in bad shape. Uh, if you allow this to continue, it will start to affect the steel structure. Um, but what needs to happen is this centering removed. It's not needed anymore. It's not a structural component. Only when the building or the slab is constructed is when it's important. Once that cast concrete is formed, that deck can be removed. So you'll see that's part of the scope here once we get further along. Um, some other related work to the bridge um, outside of the steel and the concrete is these uh, masonry walls. We have piers uh, that hold up, you know, the, the bridge support is right here. Um, these are all views of the piers, the top, uh, and these are the walls surrounding at the entrance. Um, these piers have uh, allowed water because of the way that they were constructed where the column of the bridge goes through these piers. Water has gotten in behind that brick and then through the freeze-thaw cycle it just has blown that, that brick structure apart completely. Um, the, the coping tops are open. Um, you know, this brick here is just really just dry stacked. There's no more mortar left in the joints. Uh, and then these low walls out front here, the same thing has happened with these coping joints. They've opened up. Uh, they should have been a cock joint to allow some movement. They were a tool joint with mortar. Water has gotten into that wall. Efflorescence is happening. Um, brick is starting to crack. The joints are failing. Um, it needs to be pointed, repaired. And I'll explain the scope of work with them as we get through these observations. 
Um, also related to the bridge, but not directly on it, some other conditions have happened uh, since the life of the building has been here. Um, the stone in the areas underneath the bridge uh, is starting to erode. Um, a, more, a larger angular type stone is needed to, to be able to retain itself up on the hillside. Um, the sidewalk below the bridge is, is uh, showing signs of rust stains only because it's dripping you know, from the bridge above. So uh, we'd like to address those too in this scope. And then lastly, um, the lighting on the bridge. Um, obviously the underside lights that are mounted to that deck, they need to be removed to remove the decking that we're going to have to do. Uh, they need replaced. Um, some of them are damaged. Kids um, throw and break the lenses of the LED lights that Dave's already replaced. Um, these are those bollards that are out front. This is one, I believe it's one of the original ones that was out here. Um, and there were three of them, um, and two are gone. Um, and they put this steel beam so nobody drives up here any for her anymore. But somebody must have removed one to be able to even get the truck up there at one time, unless they fit through them. I'm not sure. but. Uh, Anyway, that's, uh, they're, they're not very uh, protective as far as uh, vehicles that come up there, so we're proposing something that's more permanent with the concrete uh, infill inside of it. And then there are also light bollards up the sides. I think one is still there, one's missing. Um, and then there's some uplights too that uh, I believe kids actually get out on the side of this bridge and are standing on those lights sometimes, so that's not good. So they're turned sideways, up and down. They're not the only work anymore. So, all right. So that's what we found out about the bridge. So the next slide is just summary of uh, oh, the fence. I forgot about the fence. This fence that's outside, out front as well. Um, it's very light gauge aluminum. Um, some of the, the freestanding posts have broke off at the ground. Uh, you can see the rails are broke. There's a gate over here that's just hanging, and one's missing. We're going to propose that we replace this fence while we're out here at the front entrance um, with an added cost. So. All right, so proposed work. Um, on the top surface of the bridge, uh, we're going to cut out damaged areas where you see the cracks, um, restore the reinforcing um, with some anchor bolts and wire mesh inside that those areas that we cut out, and then patch the concrete, um, clean it up, Reseal all the joints, pull all the caulking joints out, reseal them, and then you'll see a product later in the presentation here. We're proposing to put a multi-coat, uh, two-part urethane sealer over in the entire deck surface. So this is going to make that deck impervious, um, not let water down through that concrete and continue to destroy the steel. On the underside of the bridge, uh, we're going to take down that metal bridge form deck that you saw was rusting. It's not structural. Uh, scrape off any loose concrete, restore that concrete, remove any uh, miscellaneous rust that's on those steel members, the, the, the beams and the purlins. Uh, Recoat all that steel with a, a field applied galvanizing coating. Um, and then put a coating over top of the, the underside of that concrete to make it more light reflective and also to give it some type of uh, protective uh, barrier on the underside of that. Does that include the lights that will be removed, replaced also? Yeah, that's uh, number four here on the next oh, page. Sorry. Thank you. sorry. Uh, and then the masonry, <laughs> uh, as I said earlier, we're going to repoint those joints on those brick walls and the piers, remove loose mortar, uh, replace damaged brick, uh, and then to solve the problem with those metal or those stone caps that you saw were splitting and allowing water back into the wall, uh, we're going to get a preformed uh, heavy gauge metal coping that you would normally put on top of a roof edge uh, in a, like a 12 or 14 gauge metal and have it formed so it sits on top of that, uh, those stone pieces and water you know, will not be able to get down behind that wall at that point. All right, next page, Dave. Um, we're going to fix up the landscaping stone on the hillside that you saw the pictures of it eroding. Take the Ambridge uh, stone A away from that lower entrance um, it's starting to fall apart and a lot of that red infill stone is scattered throughout uh, the rest of the hillside. Um, I believe it was built at a later date by a class project. It was a senior project that didn't get completed. 
and then power wash and clean all the concrete walks, uh, and then replace the aluminum fence. And we're proposing we do that fence since it's kind of remote from the, gr the, the bridge as an alternate price. So <coughs> at bid day, you'll be able to determine whether or not you want to include that in the scope or not. And then as far as the lighting goes, I mentioned replacing the three bollards at the front with a, a heavy-duty concrete-filled bollard. Um, and then the, the two bollards on each side going up the entrance, in lieu of replacing those, uh, we were going to propose just a downlight that's mounted on the truss itself uh, to allow you know, the, the walkway to be illuminated as you approach the building. Um, replace the lights on the underside with new LED lights. Um, and then another alternate bid would be to replace these up lights on the outside of the building, on the outside of the bridge, uh, with new up lights as another additional cost for you to consider. Yeah, here's some snapshots of what these products are that I was referring to. Here's the baller, uh, it's concrete filled on the base, with an LED top, vandal proof. Um, here's the underside of the bridge lights uh, that would be uh, mounted on the bottom. And then these would be the ones mounted on the truss to shine down and illuminate the walking surface. Here's the bridge up lights. Um, they're mounted on a brick wall here, but they'd be on those lower piers for each side and shine up just to accentuate the, the bridge itself. Um, it's the only reason we made that an alternate bid. It's not there for any other purpose other than just to illuminate the bridge. Um, and then up top here is this multi-coat urethane seal coating that I mentioned. You can see it being applied on a parking deck there. It's meant for... Um, PennDOT specifies it a lot on some of their bridge work that they use. It's meant for uh, heavy vehicle traffic. Uh, you can see how it's applied and it has a thickness to it uh, once it's hardened. Uh, they do put an additive into it, uh, like a sand silica additive to make it uh, slip resistant, so allow you some traction, not slippery. It comes with a five-year warranty, um, and they recommend uh, a recoat every 10 years. So. Um, and then lastly, here's the fence also that would be replaced. This is a, rather than an aluminum fence, uh, this is an ornamental steel fence uh, that has a much heavier gauge than what you have out there. Okay, one more slide is the uh, estimated cost. And you can see I broke this down into the different categories we talked about. Um, Majority of the cost is the steel and the concrete repairs, obviously. Um, we did have a contractor look at the scope of work, and uh, he was also near this price range, so um, if I think I'm fairly accurate with that. Um, unfortunately, it's needed. That's, that's the bad part, and I think we're being conservative with how we're tackling the, the work. We're trying to address all the needs, short of ripping all the concrete out and rebuilding the bridge, which is not something you want to do. Um, so this is your, your best approach. You know, this, this approach will get you another 30, 40 years as long as the building stands here uh, currently. So, so looking ahead, um, approving this to go out for bid next, next month. We hope to receive bids uh, early May so you can award them in May. And we'll be able to start construction uh, in June once school's out. Um, it's important we do that, obviously, because it's the main entrance to the building. Um, Doug and Dave had a plan to have students come in different entrances for summer school or whenever else that may be accessing the building. So. And we were anticipating this could take about eight weeks, uh, so August 2nd, and it still gives us a buffer before school starts again. I'm not sure exactly when the start date is in, in the fall next year. but. Okay, that's it. Anybody have any questions? Sure. At one point, you talked about <coughs> replacing the concrete because it had leaks in the, and showed us the bottom. And then you talked about just resurfacing it. So does that mean, so I can understand this, is you want to take part of the concrete off? Um, they've advanced the slides there. I'll show you. Um, I included my drawings at the end here in the slide. Keep going. One more. Yep. All right, so this is, the, uh, this is the, our plan that would be released to contractors. This is the top surface of the deck. 
uh, everything that you see patched there would be that two-part epoxy coating, urethane coating that would be applied. Uh, these X's that you see here, we went out and field verified where all the cracks are. So the purpose of that is for them to identify where the crack is. They're going to cut the concrete, saw cut it on each side of that crack of, of that repair location, remove that concrete, and restore it, patch it with a, uh, an epoxy-based concrete product. And at one point you talked about it would be better if it was thicker or ours is thinner. What difference does that make? Well, it would have made a difference initially. Um, Too late. We can't add topping to it now. It's you know you can never get in the front door. Um, the elevation work wouldn't really work at this point. Um, and the structure of the bridge was designed to hold the thickness of concrete that you currently have inside. So just don't let any vehicles drive. <laughs> What's the stop the oxidation of the, of the wire and the, the reborn underneath the existing concrete that's already starting to oxidize? That's what we're going to be cutting out. You're going to cut out everything that's in oxidation state? Everything that we can see, a stain mark in the concrete from above and below where that rebar inside that concrete failed and started to rust. We're going to cut that out, restore the, the uh, reinforcing for new concrete. And then you're going to put a topping on and top of that concrete? Yep, seal all the joints and then put a topping over top. The whole deck? The whole deck. And then what, what material should be used in the wintertime to throw on there to keep it from, like, when you have, like, obviously you're not going to use salt because salt will eat right through that. Yeah, that's a good question. We'll need to um, use the road salts. You know, if PennDOT uses it on the roads, um, salt may be okay because it's not attacking the lime in the concrete that's there. Now we have a urethane coating right. on top. Is that urethane so. coating going to be, is it going to be prevented? It should, and I'll let me check into that and I'll get back to you. Okay. So, and how thick will this your uh, coating be? I think it's, uh, you know, it's almost an eighth of an inch thick by the time you're, you pour that. So, so help me understand why it, it sounds absurd. Why it's more expensive, not more expensive, to bring in a bobcat with a jackhammer, jackhammer off the deck, and put new uh, underlayment, pour it underlayment on it, and re pour the deck. For, forget all the ancillaries. It, it, and, and let's forget about the urethane for a minute, because <coughs> as you know, if any water gets under that urethane, it will separate from the concrete and you'll end up with a patch that's four foot wide. <coughs> and a five year guarantee is fine, but this bridge is 10 years old and, and we're talking about twice as much as what the bridge probably cost when it was initially installed to fix it. So let, let's forget the aesthetics for a minute. Let's forget the fence and let's forget the A and the mix of stones and the dirty concrete and, and the lights. Let's just talk about the functionality of this thing. Ideally, it was supposed to be a focal point. If we could fill up underneath it and build a tunnel into the one door, we probably would, and, and just leave the trusses up on the top. We don't have that option because the tunnel's too expensive. But why is it less expensive to go through all this remediation with, and, and still not deal with the root cause, which eventually that deck is going to crack or it's going to spall or something's going to happen and a mix of salt and water are going to infiltrate that deck again and it's going to hit the rebar and we're going to be in the same situation we were. It just might be 12 years from now versus 9 years from now. So I'm, I'm, I'm just saying I'm not in favor of fixing something that 10 years from now is going to again be another problem. When I heard for 30 to 40 years, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of believing that. Why don't you just do what you would do in a normal construction, right? And rip off the whole deck and report. it and put in trench drains or whatever you would put in in the surface, you know, two inch, four inch wide trough drains to address any uh, infiltration you might get from the water and replace the whole thing versus trying to cut the corget from underneath and then trying to deal with the galvanized understructure. You'll have access to all that immediately with no deck on it. And I have to admit it's it got to be substantially cheaper. Well, if you're only looking at the costs of repairs for the concrete and the steel. Yep. Uh, that's what you limited it to. 
That's only 135,000. So yeah, I know that only 135,000 is about 128,000 dollars more than we want to spend. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm so, only here to propose. I, 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 so I, so I wasn't the original designer, <laughs> so I, I'll give you an um, example. I, you know, I I happen to pour a a, a slab for a, a plant, right? That slab was 80 foot by 260 feet. It was 6,000 pound concrete with fiberglass and rebar both, right? And you had an excavation to 12 inches deep with a sub base. Now there was no demolition, but the cost of that slab was probably $35,000 all in. It's really difficult for me to say it was probably 4,000 square feet, give or take. Yeah, you're right. Something like that, 4,000 square feet of concrete can't be ripped up in, in an average driveway. And, and understand, I understand there's no under, understructure to an average driveway. I'm not trying to oversimplify this. But at the cost of concrete, if this is all labor and man hours, why wouldn't you just bring in machinery and rip the whole freaking thing up, relay your underlayment, and report it, and deal with the water through very simple drains and other, <coughs> and crown it, or whatever you want to do to try to further address the, the drainage issue. Um, and well, there's no guarantee that the concrete's not going to crack again. So accepted, but if you have you drains, should probably put the urethane coating. Even if you were to, I would recommend the urethane coating. Even right, if you the replace urethane the coating, is probably eight thousand dollars. Maybe I don't know. Maybe Place it's two fifty. You think it's four four fifty a square? It's about fifteen grand for that. Okay. Yeah, and it's in every parking deck in the city. That's that's what's on that parking deck. Right, but you, I mean, I go, for example, I go to the Pittsburgh airport, and, and you know the result of a poorly installed urethane coating on the top deck of that parking garage. So I don't know that I'm a complete fan of a five-year warranty with a 10-year reapplication. Would, would I then say, yeah, I'm going to spray this thing on for 15 or 20 grand every five or 10 years or whatever? Mm -hmm. I don't know that I'm a, a, a fan of that based on the financial sure. position. Sure, I mean, of the, part of the requirements of the installation is going to have to be somebody who's installed it before, somebody right. who's experienced with the product, with the manufacturer, that, you know. But all the man hours to go up underneath and assembly torch out or whatever you're going to do, all of that underlayment and then drop it, right, still won't resolve the rebar problem within the concrete itself that's not immediately visible. That rebar eventually is going to rust and it's going to spalt out the bottom of that bridge. If you remove the water source, it yeah. will. It won't. It'll stop rusting. So whatever state it's in, if there is some unknowns, so it'll it'll stay. So my question is, why don't you just report the whole thing, crown it, put external drains on the top of it, literally external drains, right? Trench drains, left to right, top to bottom, whatever they are, um, to address some of your water infiltration issue. And if you crown it correctly, your water in theory should flow toward your drains. Mm -hmm. It addresses your rebar problem. I don't know that I would put the urethane on or not. Um, based There's on tool joints at each of these. You see these lines here? Right. So each of these is a tool joint where concrete is, the purpose of the tooling, as you know, right. is intended for the concrete to crack there. Correct. Right. Unless you put in an expansion joint or something off the beam line. Yeah. Right? Well, expansion, you know, fillable expansion joint material only lasts two years. Mm -hmm. So you'd be out there resealing that concrete every two years because the water, once it cracks, and it will crack, it's going to go down and it's going to touch the steel, it's going to touch your new decking that you just installed. Um, and unfortunately, again, we can't increase the thickness of the concrete that's installed because the structure of the deck of the bridge was designed for five inches. So, yep. so I'm just asking, isn't it cheaper than, than all that labor to post your foot around with basically a makeshift solution that I understand you think has a very long life to it, but if we were so smart 12 years ago, we wouldn't have built a bridge to nowhere, right? Well, don't you have that opinion? Right. <laughs> well, I just, I'm looking at it from the standpoint, the board property is $10.50 a square foot, that's tear out. It's $10.50 a square foot, tear out and put in, because I do it all the time. And here we're looking at something that you're charging $120,000 for. Not him. Not you, but, you know, it, it, to me it just seems outrageous. I mean, I would just come in here and tear that out, put all new floor decking down, four or five thousand concrete with fiber, and you're good to go. Put some drains in it, like he's saying. 
and I get forget the aesthetics part for a minute, right? Because some of those aesthetics, our maintenance guys are going to move stone. I can, I can pretty much guarantee that. Yes, you're going to need lighting, right? For some safety standpoint, we'll clean the sidewalk. The defense is an alternative. We have to decide what the biggest deal is. How most inexpensively to fix this "quote unquote" signature feature, where 12 years from now I don't have to hear sitting in the audience that this this bridge needs fixed again. In hindsight, there would never be a signature feature on this building had the, the remediation costs have been known. That it never would have been built. Of course, maybe the school. The, Itself would never have been built either. That's no matter of discussion. Um, well, it would have turned out okay, I think, if some extra steps were taken at the time. Right. Um, so I'm just asking. I mean, the numbers that, that he gives to you are numbers that I've seen in traditional construction. Those, the, his numbers are accurate. Right. So mm -hmm. uh, simple math says if that's 4,000 square feet, right, at 10 bucks is 40 grand. 10 grand because we're not real smart, um, that's 50 grand well, without anything else. That's a lot cheaper than 130 grand for what appears to be basically the same solution. I think that's a fair assessment when you're looking at it strictly from a material standpoint. I okay. think the constructability of you having to shore up the, the bridging, of the forming of the deck from okay. the underside, once all that is exposed and you, you have just the raw skeleton of the structure of the bridge, you're going to have to dress up the, the and put new studs on those welded beams yep. to receive the, the, the new Except form. Except you're going to cut out, you're going to cut out all, you're going to cut out and drop, basically down to the lower level, your underlayment and things, right? You're going to bring in a bob, not you. They're going to bring in a bobcat with a jackhammer on it, and they're going to pound out the left side and right side until they have a path that, that bobcat has to come off of. And then they're going to take a manual jackhammer and they're going to drop the rest of that concrete down to the floor below. And you're going to be left with underlayment that you're going to be able to basically pick off with an acetylene torch in its entirety. Right? You're going to have to lay new underlayment anyway. You're going to have to have some welders there. There's no reason they can't. They wouldn't be able to put studs back on to tie the concrete back into. To me, it's all about slope or, or, or crown of the bridge with some exposed drainage. And, and not it sure not, about the drainage. Well, I'm not sure where you're going to take drainage and it not freeze when it's in a, you know, some type of concealed pipe taking it away from the bridge. I don't know um, that you're going to take it away from the bridge other than drop it, it down below. And it's currently just to shed off. Yeah, I was thinking, just, right? you're making holes strip and strip. Would you just, just drop, drop it down and straight down the ground? And pull collection, you know, you're going to pull a six inch collection pipe on two the inches worth of water? Well, or onto the bank. Yeah, well, on either side, right? I don't know that we would, for example, rebuild the the brick pillar mounts because those beams go all the way down to foundation, I assume, right? The, the uprights. So you'd leave the, the brick masonry and it's just take it away. Condition. Right? Take it away and, and treat that because it's an aesthetic that is underneath the bridge that the football team sees when they run out from the locker room onto the field. It's not particular to the signature aspect of the bridge itself. You know, the signature aspect of the bridge are the arches. Right. <coughs> and, and, and now, <coughs> one and a half pylons in front of the arches. There's a concrete base under there that you're going to see. There's a base, there's <coughs> concrete, right behind that brick, there's a concrete backup pier right. that they built that on. Um, so you'll see rock concrete and a base plate with that bridge pier sitting on top of it. Right. So, and I, I fully understand. If you're acceptable what, with that, if you're fine and, with that. And putting a metal cap on top of, of the existing stone. You know, the wall needs to be repaired. Absolutely. Yeah. And then you put a metal right, you put a metal cap, metal form cap on top of it. It's just gonna have to be a thick enough gauge that if somebody sits on it, it doesn't crush the ribs, or it's gonna be flat, or we create enough uh, pitch to it that nobody can sit on it. Right? Yeah. Put pigeon spikes <laughs> on it, right? <laughs> I'm just saying functionally. I guess I'll need direction if that's the path I'm taking Don't at this point. Me. So, um, <laughs> like I said, these these documents are complete to, to 95%. So if we're going to be uh, redoing the scope of work, um, 
we may not be on that same time line that I just presented there. So. Mm -hmm. Which may affect the work occurring this summer. Except. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm always. I was just going to ask. I don't. Hate, I hate to put you on the spot. No, I, I have a question. Since if this board would like this to be reworked, there's something that I don't know if anybody here or why it wasn't done. We have boilers on the ground floor. Why don't we heat that bridge? You could do that. You, what are well, you I'm saying, saying you there's that whole thing all right concrete on. So there's no concrete. salt ever you thrown on it. Absolutely. You just flip the switch. And hydro. Hydro lines you the wood off that boiler. But that's what I'm asking. The question is, that, that's here. a high pressure boiler. You could do electricity too. Right. How you much would that cost? Though? It's not well, expensive. Uh, when you have the hot water down there. Well, you're going to have heating. Heat. I'm assuming that the boilers are high pressure, which means you're going to have to have a reducing manifold, right? Uh, you're building boilers? Yeah. Not sure you're going to be able to circulate that water through there. Well, they're using them right now. They use it as a big hot water tank for this building. Right. Why? You know, that's something I have in the works to try to stop doing, make separate hot water for this building instead of a heating boiler, heating hot water all summer in Worcester hands. That's what we're doing now. Because it was a new boiler in the last school that was brought over, and there is no hot water tank, there's no holding tank, there's nothing. The boiler runs 12 months out of the year to wash your hands. I'm curious if the five inch concrete thickness will be enough to cover. Well, that's what I'm saying. Pipe. You know, there's some engineering that Is it to something that they would want here. you to look at while you're I can look at it. Too. I, I put them in where I've, I've lined with electrical yeah. and then put up the switch in. Yeah, but that's a gazillion dollars. I know in, in garages, we put in four inch floors in garages with flexible packs. When we heat it, it sounds absurd. We heat it with, with a 60 or 70 gallon water heater. Now, admittedly, it's only 2,000, 2,500 square feet. And it's sheltered because obviously it's a garage floor. But it's more than adequate. If, if we're only talking about raising the temperature above freezing, maybe it solves all of your Maybe it solves all of your problems. Well, that's what I'm asking to the board now. That we'll yeah, and there's, some, there's still some flex that happens in that bridge, that. too. So that's another concern of whether right. or not that pipe it's too rigid that's going to be in there. Right. But if you're using PEX or some other flexible alternative, right, plastic mounts to it, I would think you might end up with a solution. I'm just saying, we're looking at dollars on you know, $1.7 million deficit. I, I don't know that if it's money well spent that we spend $200,000 on an aesthetic entrance to the high school. As much as the design is beautiful, I don't know that we have that luxury. I'm still going to recommend that urethane coating on top of it. That's okay. You, 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 I, I'm more than open to There's no about reason the value you can't of the $15,000. There's no reason you can't put extra belt and suspenders but, on the you know, right, finished but, product. But putting a $15,000 on a, on a $50,000 deck maybe is a prudent decision to get 30 well, years. Let's do better than what they did previously. You know, versus my, my you know, kind of happenstance comment of let's put drains in it, right? You know, I'd be buying four inch trench drains and bolting them together. Um, <laughs> it probably isn't appropriate, but my simple mind thinks simple solutions. Well, the, the underlaying is all rotted because of the salt. Right. You know, and everything. There's, there's no drainage on that. But if we just repair it, I, I think we end up with some sort of spalding. Once, once that water is in that rebar, that rebar will, con will continue to interact in some regard and rust, right? And it's going to expand. And that, at some point in time, is going to damage that urethane, and it's going to bubble it, or it's not going to crack it. Basically, you're going to get moisture underneath it. You're going to get a big blister, and now we're patching this thing. Um, I just think it, it just might be prudent to spend a different type of money and just take the whole freaking deck off. And because it is labor, right? It's not materials. It's all labor. Mm -hmm. It's got to be less labor to do it. It'd be easier to tear it off and crawl Tear the whole freaking thing over. underneath and tear it all off and have guys hanging on scaffolding underneath it, dropping it. Okay. Um, and you can gussy up all the galvanized joints and everything else and the purlins and if you need to replace some bolts or whatever it is, you can do so all at that time because you have access, complete access to it. And it's only, what, 12 or 15 foot off the ground. So all your material is going to drop down below. And yeah, you're going to have to get it out from down below, I guess around the back of the field and out that way with a dump truck and a 
House I'm going to suggest we still leave the item for permission to bid this on the agenda next week. That way, when we have the redesign, it won't delay us even further in the project. So we'll come back to you with the re redesigned scope once we have it. But that I'll way, we can that. still keep moving okay. along ahead with the project. Okay. will okay. delay us, so we have to wait for another board meeting. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, because that's the trend. Right. Yeah, I'm okay with the alternative, with the heat line also. Yeah, well, on that, on that topic, myself, I'll have extra engineering time involved to study the heating solution, the slab, um, and a little just in the redesign. What if yes, it's but your cost, tail in comparison to what the Yeah, cost great, is. sure. What happens, are you going to look into whether or not you can run the hot water through and what effect that might have on the seal you want to put on it? Well, those two. Right. Jim will want to come and put his hand right in it. You're welcome. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. No problem. Okay. Uh, at this point, it is public comment regarding agenda items only. The meet and discuss meetings are open to the public. At this time, district residents may come forward to comment or ask questions on agenda items only. Each person must take their first and last name and address prior to speaking. Each person will be allowed three minutes and will speak only once during this half hour period. There will be no discussion during this time that any board member or administrator desiring to address questions or concerns may do so at the conclusion of the committee report. So at this point, the floor is open for anyone with any issues on tonight's agenda or any discussion. I'm so always fighting three Seeing no one come forward, we'll move forward with the committee reports. First up will be Mrs. Pettigrew with Education and Technology. Okay, thank you, Mr. President. We have four items for discussion this evening. The first one is a field trip. It's recommended that Anthony Amadeo, a social studies teacher at the middle school, be authorized to take the seventh day for social studies students to Gettysburg, PA, and Hershey, PA, from May 31st to June 2nd, 2019. The bus will depart from the middle school on Friday at 4.30 and return on Sunday around 8.30. The trip will cost $350 per student and will cover all expenses. There will be no cost to the district. Parents or guardians will be required to sign permission and release forms. Chaperones will be required to have current clearances, satisfactory drug screening, TV testing, and responses by current hormone players to the Act 168 screening. Any discussion? Okay. Number two, rescind. It's recommended to rescind a motion passed item two under education and technology. Um, that I had presented at the January 16, <coughs> 2019 board meeting. Questions, discussion? Okay. Number three is a student discipline is recommended to ratify discipline agreement 2018-2019-22 relevant to a middle school student effective March 11, 2019. And number four, also student discipline is recommended to ratify discipline agreement 1819-23 relevant to a high school student, effective March 12, 2019. Those are all the items for discussion this evening. All right, thank you very much. Uh, next would be finance and budget. Mr. Sass, please. Thank you. Items one through three are the traditional approval of salaries and bills and transfers. Um, they'll be finalized prior to the next meeting. Um, item, I'm sorry. Item one, two, and five are those items. <laughs> <laughs> item three. Uh, relates to approval of the BBIU budget. Uh, my request is that that budget be represented with 2017-18 actuals, 2018-90 estimates of actuals, and 2019-20 budget. So it's only that? about yeah. 30 line yeah. items. I can't yeah. imagine yeah. what that is. Just call it and forget it. Okay. An, an unrealistic ask. It's not a problem. Any questions on item three? Item four and five basically are the same. They're the same parcel. Um, they relate to the tax exoneration or repository settlement of uh, abandoned property or um, within the district. It's, at the, it's on 8th Street extension. Item six relates to um, the installation of wide access, wireless access points um, and network switches in the middle and high school. Uh, they anticipate that costing $85,000, of which 80% is recovered through an E-rate program. This is how we get much of our technology equipment. It's an 80-20 program. 
I mean, it's hard not to do almost any upgrade technologically when you're only paying two dollars on ten dollars. Questions on that? Item seven relates to uh, fiber connections. Though I'm curious if the fiber is at a one specific building or is interconnected to all buildings on a on a private network. <coughs> For district wide access, it's a redundant. I believe a redundant service in case one goes down. But it's for all buildings. Yes. At one gigabyte. Well, upward, well, I don't know. It's upward and downward. I believe it's yeah. the, the same speed, both up and down, unlike the current cable modem. From my understanding. I heard no freaking way that anybody can compete with uh, three hundred eighty dollars a month. No, they're uh, I pay more at home for yeah. my Comcast. Yeah. That, that is just that is just a steal. So the GoNet speed is a partnership that they they want to start a partnership with us, and so Doug you met with them and um, they've been trying to get into uh, really expand their customer base in Ambridge and the river towns and um, I think that this is a great approach for them and I, uh, I hope it helps with exposure for them because they, were, they really wanted to help the school district. And, and is there fiber in proximity to each of the buildings? Like I know there is yes. even yes. close to dust yes. but in, in all yes. the other buildings there's close proximity yeah. for the yeah. final leg? Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Any questions on seven? Yes. If it's them wanting to get into this area, how come they don't give us a better deal? Oh it's a pretty good deal. That's a great crazy deal. deal. I can't do what I pay deal. for my home. Yeah. Are you the guy that goes in and reaches for the quarter and the foul time for somebody next to you? I need to make a contingent of money that they go for the quarters and the common world. Because we're sucked in the comments. So oh, I, I'll second that. They're trying to get it. So they're, they had to do it. They are working their way through. Yeah, the they had to hurry up. They did Ambridge, then Alcoba, and Rochester. They're going the wrong way. They're going the wrong way. They need to go across the river or up the river. Okay. Yeah, the Comcast are coming by. They are like held hostage with the Comcast. Go ahead, Mr. Sasser. And item number eight is uh, uh, what Mary Jo had spoken to, I think, last meeting the operating budget associated with the Career and Technology Center. Uh, I believe we'd seen details of that uh, in the last meeting. Uh, but that so I have who, nothing else. Who are the people recommended for number eight? The board president and who's the board secretary? No, that's just to sign it. That's, that's just to sign the resolution. Right. Well, I know who you are. And Marianne is still. Still. Until March 29th. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. Uh, any other discussion on finance and budget? If not, we'll go to building and grounds. Mr. Cowall, please. Item number one, bid also authorization is recommended the administration be authorized for the uh, renovation bids of the following. One is the awning pillar of economy elementary school and bridge entrance at the high school. Question on the awning pillar. What are you, you going to do with the awning pillar? Are you going to paint underneath? Is that what you're going to do? Awning. That's, I'm saying this for the first time. What are we talking about? I know the, the brickwork that's on the bottom of the pillars, we painted the awnings and we painted the front pillars last year. Okay. The kindergarten pillars will be painted this before, you know, when there's no kids there. The back of the school has the big pillars from ground to the, to the roof. Those would need bid, but as far as the little bit of brickwork there, we were going to do that in-house when the kids couldn't touch it. Okay. So these are the rear the These are the rear. Uh, that, that's what I'm asking. I mean, the rear, right? I don't know. I thought the, the, I thought the front, front pillars at Conway Elementary School would fall in. We painted the front when the awnings got painted. We we patched and painted the front <coughs> pillars to the front entrance and along the whole. I know, and the, the main entrance. Of the I didn't either. This I, is what I, this is what came to June. No, Maybe I just put gave her the bridge entrance. Okay. I don't know what this must have been on from a prior motion. I'm okay. not aware. So scratch one A. Yeah, I'm not aware. Yeah, I don't think we need to so be. So it's not there. That's going brickwork. It'll be internal. Right. Is what they say. We'll right. fix that okay. internally. The front of the school, yes. The back of the school, we could see if we can get a um, lift. a lift to get there in that soft ground back there, and that's okay. going to have to be, you know, after some dry it's days. From my system, bridge is all I know about. Right. And item number two, bid authorization is recommended the administration be authorized to advertise for sealed janitorial supply bids for 2019 school year. Any discussion? 
Okay, I want to thank Mr. Pillow. We'll move forward. Athletics, Mrs. Fisher. Nothing to report this evening. Can I interrupt? Interject. Um, would you like to make an announcement about your bowling team, please? Since we're on athletics. Um, our bowling team had a great year. Girls won the section and went to the WPIBL. Unfortunately, we didn't uh, fare well with the girls. Uh, the boys finished second in the section. Uh, we advanced through the WPIL and just advanced last Saturday at the region. The boys are going to the states this weekend up in Lancaster. Uh, Ambridge has uh, the section MVP, Ryan Adams. He's first team all section and he is the WPIBL MVP of the league. Wow. Out of Ambridge. Wow. Well, hopefully you can hopefully you can acknowledge us on month you know, next week after we go to the states and do something. Tell them we're looking forward to seeing. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, public relations, Mrs. Milo. Nothing to report this evening. Hearing your name, Mrs. Kilo is not here this evening. Uh, Mrs. Fisher, would you please take that? Sure. Item number one, policy 919, use of district name, color, insignia, or logos, third reading. It is recommended as a third reading to adopt school board policy 919, use of district name, color, insignia, or logos, to direct that any use of the name, color, insignia, and or logos be used solely to support the goals and objectives of the Ambridge Area School District. Any questions, comments on that? Great idea. Number two, policy 247, hazing, first reading. It is recommended as a first reading to adopt school board policy 247, hazing, and retire school board policy 247, hazing, adopted January 20, 2010, to maintain a safe, positive environment for students and staff that is free from hazing. Any questions, comments? Number three, policy 707, use of school facilities, first reading. It is recommended as a first reading to amend the school board policy 707, use of school facilities to make school facilities available to individuals and community groups without discrimination and in accordance with this policy, provided the use does not interfere with the educational program of the schools. Questions or comments? Number four, policy 904, public attendance at school events, first reading. It is recommended as a first reading to adopt school board policy 904, public attendance at school events, and retire school board policy 904, public attendance at school events, adopted October 19, 2011, to maintain order and preserve school facilities during activities and events sponsored by the school district. Comments, questions? No? Great, thank you, Mrs. Fisher. Uh, legislative, with Mrs. Kehoe's absence, Mrs. Island, will you take that one, please? Yes, I will. There is Senate Bill 34, paren SB 34, and paren. It's recommended to adopt Resolution 2018-2019-04 to communicate support of Legislative Senate Bill 34, SB 34. And prior to now, you all received a copy of the resolution that we will be signing. So there are a couple types of things that are going to be correct on something now and next week. Correct. This is cyber schools. Just cyber school. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't include charter cybers. They, 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 so the we're the part would not be in cyber that. charter schools, not cyber slash charter school. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Um, and then, do we have this electronically? We will. Okay. Okay. Just so I, it'll save me time can if I can just on my own letterhead. Absolutely. Copy. Okay. Yes. Please. Yes. Can we share it? Absolutely. The more support we get behind the better for us. Just that people will, you'll have to change it before you send it out and take off board of school. Right. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. We ask that we ask the public to also uh, join us in supporting Senate Bill Number Thirty Four. Um, so we're going to post more information on how anyone can. Um, that would be write. available on the school website for the public to get. Yeah. Let me work on that. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, can I have the Sunshine Law, please? Section 708 of the Sunshine Law permits agencies to hold executive sessions to discuss employment and personnel matters, labor relations and arbitration matters, purchase or lease of real estate up to the time an option or agreement is obtained, 
litigation or potential litigation, legal matters subject to attorney-client privilege, and other agency business which is discussed in public would violate lawful privilege or would violate confidentiality laws. The school board of directors held a executive session prior to this meeting to discuss employment and personnel matters, salary, schedule, and labor relations. The board will not return to take any legislative action. Thank you. Uh, just two quick announcements before we motion to adjourn. Remember, next Wednesday, again, at 5 o'clock, will be the second budget workshop, followed by a regular board meeting at 7 o'clock. All right. Uh, can I? Yes. Based on a memorandum for Mr. McCausland's workshop, um, related to naming rights and advertising, um, I think I asked that the district consider formally ending the existing unfulfilled advertising and naming rights agreements. And then uh, I suggest we put together a committee from the uh, public, starting with the basketball tipsters club membership, as a start to uh, determine a course of action to look to naming rights and advertising associated with select facilities in the district. Obviously, the first is a precursor to the second. Anything else before we adjourn? I've been in rare form. You want me to say something else? We need, I don't have a first and we didn't do it in January when we finalized all the committee chairs. So a motion to create a personnel committee. No, we don't even need a motion. Okay. The board allows the president to appoint, appoint uh, a board committee yeah, members. And it's a standing committee for your policy. So if you have a committee chair, you just need to decide um, or ask to go to the board members to sit. For the personnel committee for the grievances. So we need two other people. So at this point, I will appoint Mrs. Milan and Mr. Weir. Okay. What a team. Uh, anything else this evening? Motion to adjourn, please. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Weir. Second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Kettle. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any of you opposed? Chair, what are you doing? Okay. So before Valerie.